The coronavirus pandemic creating a cloudy future for almost every business in America. According to Wells Fargo, 171 publicly traded companies have pulled guidance this earnings season. That's roughly 35 percent of the S&P 500. But Tim says one of these names could be a home run investment. He's stepping up to the plate with a fast pitch. Tim, take it away. Yes, Mel, uh, and I miss baseball, but uh, I'm going to fast pitch Abbott Labs. And you're talking about companies that have pulled guidance. And, and this is one of those companies. So I'm going to first talk about what I might be looking for in a company that pulls guidance. Uh, and then let's talk about why specifically at Abbott Labs. But, but in the case of Abbott Labs, you know, here's a company that has total diversity, uh, diversity in their, in, their, in their business units. They've got four major uh, economic kind of footprints, but then they've got global diversity. And then they've got diversity in their customer base, which is the fact that they've got uh, hospitals and a consumer business. Uh, the balance sheet is, is fantastic. And as you might imagine with, with a pharma company, there's a lot of cash in the balance sheet. There's a decent free cash flow yield. And this is, you know, roughly debt to equity of around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 times. So at a time when you're worried about balance sheet, this is, again, another one of these companies. And it's a company who's got an earnings history of consistency. So when they pull that guidance uh, with that business model, uh, I have a lot of confidence that this is a company, as an investor, you should be taking a medium-term outlook on a lot of these companies today. So again, why Abbott? Uh, well, they, they pulled guidance, but they gave uh, pretty decent uh, commentary on what's going on with their diagnostics business and, and their devices business, which was really probably the one that's that's most hit. Um, they're saying, hey, look, we could actually be somewhat V-shaped on this. But if you think about their diagnostics business, obviously, we've heard a lot about COVID uh, and the connection and what Abbott's doing on testing. Uh, but some of their core other established businesses, including Established Pharma uh, is a business that is very consistent over the long haul. The nutrition business was probably something that was, uh, if anything, there was some pantry stocking. There was a little bit of a front loading effect. So um, that counterbalances some of the things that they might have seen in, in some of the devices business, which was certainly hit. So look, long term, the valuation on Abbott, it trades, you know, at a slight premium to its peer group for a reason. And at a time like this, again, low mid-teens EPS with this balance sheet and with this diversity, this is the stock you want to own right now. You know, Guy, I don't know, uh, you're very astute watcher of this program, uh, especially when you're on the program. Um, but I don't know <laughs> if you noticed that there was a trade school within a fast pitch. This is like the turducken of fast money segments, with one segment inside <laughs> another segment. So I think, I mean, uh -huh. do you have a question on either part of like Tim's it. pitch? I do. I, I do have a question. I just I want to quickly say that what you call that thing, a, a, tro, a true duck in a true duck in. That's like when a duck is inside a turkey. So this trade school was inside the fast pitch, which became one segment. Yeah, that's right. Well, the more again, you know. without getting in <laughs> the more, you know, the more, you know, without getting into great deal about my constitution, that the turducken would probably not suit me particularly well. But I do have a question for Tim. And I'm a big fan of your work, Tim. My, my pushback, just to play devil's advocate, you're Thank talking you, about a stock that's gone from 60 to 100 effectively in a straight line. Does that concern you? Look, this is a company that has proven it trades at a, at a premium to its peer group, but uh, they pulled guidance. That, to me, is not something that bothered me. And, in fact, again, I look at the core businesses. I look at diagnostics, and I look at nutrition. These are businesses that should be trading at a premium relative to the peer group. No, I'm not, I'm not concerned by that. All right. No more questions. It is time to vote. So we ask you, are you buying Tim's pitch on Abbott Labs? Normally we have whiteboards that we hold up. So we're going to sort of play it by ear here. <laughs> um, Guy, what do you say? So look at this. Look at the creativity, by the way. I just want to show you that. Do you see that, Melms? Can you see it? Very sweet. The ABT, oh, ABT. right. ABT, nice. So yes. Yes. Uh, all see, right. See so you're I buying. All right. So, Pete, yes. Pete Najarian. I'm a buyer as well, so I'm holding it up. Uh, and what I like so much about it, Mel, is uh, they are such a diverse company with so many acquisitions that have been the right timing of the acquisitions, not overpaying. The only concern I have, to Guy's point, is this stock has made an incredible run back up to the upside. It's incredible that it's higher than it is than it was in January. So that part makes me a little apprehensive. I'd probably be patient, but I like the name. Steve Grasso. I want to echo that, what, what, what Pete just said. So Pete and Guy just brought up a, a, a very strong thing. So I, I say a buy, but it's got to hold the $89 level. So you don't have to really rush in because not only did it jump 
62% off the lows. It came back in about 9%, and it's made a series of lower highs. So just be careful on this one. Let it hold the $89 level, shoot against that, but bye.